Good evening, all, and uh, welcome formally to tonight's shiur, where um, I want to speak to you about uh, a significant yotzat, uh, which is today's date, the twentieth uh, of Av, and this is the yotzat of, of a great man, um, Rabbi Levi Yitzchak uh, Schneerson, um, who uh, was born on the eighteenth of Nissan in the year eighteen seventy-seven but left this world in 1944 on the 20th of Av. So today was his Yotzeit. And I'd like to dedicate this year to um, his memory by talking about him, telling you a bit about who he was, um, and also sharing with you some of his teaching. He's a great Kabbalist, but I've chosen something which I think we, we're all going to be able to understand and, and relate to. Um, but Levitzuk Schneis, and you may have guessed uh, from, from his surname, um, is the father of the uh, Lubavitcher Rebbe. Um, and uh, the Rebbe was born in 1902, um, and uh, we'll, we'll come back to that uh, in, in a moment. So Abelitzchak was his father, um, and the name Shneesen is actually uh, the family name of, of all the Chabad Rebbe's. So he was a cousin um, to um, the um, well, a great grandson of the Tzemach Tzedek, Menachem Mendel, the, the third Chabad Rebbe, um, and so he was a cousin, so to speak, to the, the Rebbe of the time, who was a B'Shalom Be uh, of, of uh, Lubavitch. Um, so that's who he is. Um, and uh, as a very young child, um, he showed signs of being a great prodigy. And uh, the previous Rebbe, Rebbe Sefitzchuk, would write about him, uh, that already from a young age, his extraordinary talents were discovered. He was a master at Talmud, Hasidic philosophy, um, and uh, delved into Kabbalah already at a, at a very young uh, age. Um, and it is his teachings that had a profound impact on his son, the Rebbe, um, and when one studies the, the Torah of, of, of our Rebbe, Nachem and uh, one, one gets, you know, one, one can feel the strong imprint uh, that this man who's your outside we mark today uh, has, uh, has had. So I want to mention before I, I carry on that today is also the Yotzat of uh, Paul's mother, the late Mira Bad Yitzchak. I'd like to dedicate uh, this year to her memory uh, and wishing you a long life. Um, so he went off to get smicha. This is quite a, a humorous uh, story in a sense from Rabbi uh, Chaim Soloveitchik. Uh, that was one of the giants of the Lithuanian world. Um, so not a chassid, but rather a mitnagedas, as, as they were called uh, back then, um, and and uh, misnaget, which we want to pronounce it. And Rabbi Soloveitchik, Rabbi Chaim, uh, the brisker rabbi, he, he wasn't keen to give him smicha, so he I kind of really, really grilled him uh, and, and, and kind of put him through um, a very, very difficult test, uh, hoping that he would kind of, you know, catch him out and, and, and he wouldn't be obliged to give him smicha because uh, yeah, he came from a totally different world. Uh, and he was very, as I said, involved in, in, in the Hasidic philosophy as well as Kabbalah. Um, and eventually, um, he, um, you know, he, he couldn't fault him in anything. Uh, he was a, a genius of, of, of a man, and he was forced to ordain him as a rabbi. Uh, but he actually commented and said, "You know, why are you are you wasting your brain on that stuff or something along those lines?" Because uh, he really felt that uh, you know, going into the world of Kabbalah um, was 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 not where where he should be going, or where somebody you know that talent uh, should be going. Um, in 1900, he was 22, um, and he um, was had already a great uh, reputation as a scholar. Um, Reblevik married um, the uh, wife of the rabbi of Nikolaev. Now, I'm showing you this on the map. Uh, this is his place of birth um, in a, a, a small town near the town of Hummel or Gummel. Uh, which is southeast Belarus, and of course uh, you would have heard uh, China give on 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 the uh, news uh, quite a bit uh, recently. So this is his place of birth. Uh, but as I said, he went south to Ukraine um, and there um, married the daughter of the rabbi of Nikolaev, and he remained there for for ten years uh, from the age of 
22 to the age of, of uh, I think 32 um, and he married the daughter of the rabbi of the town who was a, a great uh, scholar himself um, Shalom Yanovsky Shlom, Shlom Yanovsky sorry he was a rabbi of at the time they called it Nikolai and I they started in Ukrainian referring to this and Mikolai um, and uh, you, you can see uh, nearby uh, some towns that uh, you know are in the news and can, be, can become quite familiar with this map but it's kind of just the northwest of Kherson northeast of Odessa um, and, and and this city here has been uh, quite uh, a bit in the news recently Zaporizhia uh, because of the bombing of the uh, nuclear uh, reactor there. And so we've, we've, we've heard um, quite a bit um, about it. It was there in the Kalaev that Rablevik's uh, three sons were born, the eldest, uh, 1902, was Rabbi Nachman who became the Lubavitch Rebbe. Um, and then two uh, younger sons, Dov Bear and Yisrael Arielev. Uh, Dov Bear died uh, in the Holocaust. Israel Yaleb uh, moved on and lived uh, in Israel and then in, in Liverpool, in the UK, and uh, that also a fairly young man. Um, so those were the, the three sons. And at the age of 31, year 19, oh, this is a picture of, of, of the Rebbe from that era. Um, he's about two years old then. Um, at the age of uh, um, 31, Rebbev Yitzchak, as he was known, Rebbevik, was called to serve as a rabbi of the city of the Katrina Slav. Uh, so that's a little bit kind of, you know, up, up the river. This is the, uh, the, the, the um, Dnieper River that runs kind of, you know, from, from, from north of Kiev uh, through uh, the cities uh, of uh, Cherkasy and Kremenchuk and then uh, Dnieper and eventually the map doesn't carry on but uh, empties out in the um, in the uh, sea here, um, name escapes me for a second. Um, but but uh, so this is uh, this is uh, where he served. The town was called at the time Yekaterinoslav. It was then renamed uh, Dnepropetrovsk because of the river. And and very kindly they abbreviated the, the city's name, just as as I worked out how to pronounce it about five six years ago. It was shortened officially to Dnipro. Uh, you can't really read it because of the uh, the little uh, map marker. Uh, he served as a rabbi there um, for a period of um, some 30 years, so till 1939 from 1909. Yeah, that would be 30 years. Um, it was a very difficult uh, uh, rabbinate uh, because this was already during the the dark years of, 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 of the Soviet era. Um, and they gave him a very difficult time and a very, um, you know, critical um, of a lot of uh, the things that he was doing. Um, while he was there, he actually came across um, um, and had dealings with um, Menachem uh, Lusishkin, uh, who was a, a community activist. He had been the secretary uh, of the first Zionist Congress, 1897. Um, and he became first rabbi, and then, as I said, chief rabbi uh, of the city. Big city, big Jewish city, with a big uh, um, Jewish community, Hasidic constituency, but also non-religious professionals. Um, and he kind of had that kind of charisma where um, all, all respected him, and his wife, uh, Rabbi Chana Schneerson, uh, Ni Yenovsky, as I said. Uh, she was a very learned woman. She was fluent in, in many languages. Uh, and, and together they were a power couple and she contributed to her husband's success and influence uh, as a community leader. Um, during his years, he was very, very resolutely, obstinately involved in religious activism. Uh, and despite the Soviets attempt to kind of snuff it all up, so he, he oversaw the building of a, a mikveh, um, clandestinely um, officiated at uh, weddings, chuppas, uh, circumcisions. Uh, he was involved in the uh, production of uh, matzah for Pesach, um, and uh, all the factories were owned by the government, but they, they knew they had to have a rabbi to give a, a supervision, and Rebbe Yitzchak was, uh, you know, uh, you know, quite adamant in making sure that those matzahs were actually going to be proper kosher of a Pesach matzah, unlike other towns where the rabbis kind of felt compelled and had no choice but to uh, rubber stamp uh, whatever the, the rushes were actually doing. Um, now, all that unfortunately came to an end on the 9th of Nisan, uh, March 28, 19, 
a 39, but at 3 a.m., uh, four agents of the NKV, NKVD uh, arrived, that's a division of the KGB, arrived at the Schneisen home uh, there in um, Nepro and Nikotrinoslav, um, and they stationed guards of Dill began to search the house um, and uh, you know, confiscated a lot of his writings, uh, his Smicha documents, and much correspondence. Um, and uh, among the papers they took away, uh, this is quite tragic, there was a, a, an invitation from the community of Jaffa in what was Palestine, uh, that he uh, come and serve as their rabbis, including uh, visas for the entire family to be able to relocate to, Holy, to the Holy Land. But unfortunately, that, that was not to be. Uh, at 6 a.m., their search was concluded, at which point the Levi Yitzhak was arrested. Um, he was kept for a year uh, in torture and interrogations in uh, Stalin's uh, notorious uh, prisons. Um, and eventually, he was sentenced to five years of exile in Central Asia, in Kazakhstan. And I'd like to show you once again a map because that gives you a bit of a feeling uh, of what kind of exile it was. I mean, the Soviet Union was a, a, a huge, a huge country. Uh, it's now all broken up and has many, you know, many states, but this is the Ukraine. Uh, and if you look now at, uh, um, you know, the Ukraine uh, here to the West uh, and Kazakhstan um, there, uh, very much uh, the opposite end uh, of the, I mean, you go a bit further, you end up in China. Um, and, and, and there's in southeastern Kazakhstan, the city of Almaty, uh, but he wasn't sent there initially. He was sent uh, exiled to a little village uh, called Shiri. Um, and it was uh, you know, a, a terrible ordeal. Uh, with time, uh, his Rebetzin, uh, Rebetzin Khan found out where he was, uh, and she was able to um, join him there and help him and assist him, but they, they lived terrible lives. And uh, only a few years ago, the diaries of, of the Rebbets and Chanesh were published. And it's a very, very personal, uh, heart-wrenching account of, of, the, of, of what they went through from her perspective. Uh, and actually, I haven't finished reading it. I started, but it was very, very, very painful, um, very, very personal. And, and, and um, you know, when she talks and describes the pain of the tzaddik and, and, and days that he was in absolute despair, was crying, I just found it very difficult to read myself. You know, you have a man you hold in high esteem and it's not always uh, easy to uh, to come to face with their vulnerabilities, but that's a, a, personal, um, a personal angle to this. Um, so there they, they were able to find a room in some uh, Tartar couple's uh, home. Uh, it was a room with, uh, with no door, uh, with no floor, um, damp and muddy, uh, swarms of mosquitoes, and, and it, it was a painful life. Uh, no privacy, um, poverty, no food, um, and they were plagued by hunger. There were times when they didn't have a morsel of bread. Uh, for, for weeks and weeks. And during that time, World War II was ravaging Europe. So people were running east to find refuge and it ended up with many displaced people um, reaching Kazakhstan. Um, and uh, Ravitsuk became the rabbi of, of those displaced uh, persons and, and uh, they respected uh, his knowledge. Um, and uh, there uh, they carry on. They carried on. I, I'd like to um, stop for a moment and, and actually, at this point, pay tribute to uh, the Rebetzin. Uh, that's uh, Hannah uh, Schneerson. Um, this is, of course, a, a much later picture because she she did survive uh, and she ended up uh, in, in America. And this picture is taken uh, there later. I think she got out in 1947 um, and. Uh, to get to Paris, but what's remarkable is that she actually assisted uh, her husband in writing um, some of his Kabbalistic works, um, no paper, no ink. So he had some books with him, um, and all of his writings are written, you can see in this minute, minute little handwriting in the margins of the paper, which were totally, totally filled. Of course, these were ultimately made it out to America. I don't know if all of his writings, but much of his writing, um, and were published as a book called Likutei Levi Yitzchak, 
Um, so one can, and we're gonna we're gonna dip into that uh, in a couple of moments when I finish telling you about about his life, so we can we can understand uh, his teachings. Now to write this because there was no ink, and and the Leibniz manufactured uh, ink uh, from uh, I don't know what herbs and, and and leaves or whatever she could put together. Um, unfortunately, it was. Uh, she managed to get a good ink because there was all this writing in the margins and, 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 and that became part of the teachings of Rebbe Levi Yitzchak. Um, his um, sentence came to an end um, in 1944. Of course, it was a five-year uh, sentence. Uh, and he was then able to uh, move to a bigger city. Uh, he was allowed to go to the capital city, which uh, was Amati. Um, but by then he had uh, you know, become very ill his body was ravaged uh, by, by serious illness and they tried what they could uh, in Amati once he, he got there to, to uh, get in medical care. But um, although their living conditions were improved, his uh, health <laughs> became worse and worse. Uh, and eventually, um, towards the end of the summer, on the 20th of Av, uh, his uh, condition turned critical, uh, and he returned uh, his soul to his maker. Um, he is buried there uh, in Maalati, and I think I've got here a picture of his uh, tombstone, where you can clearly make out the words, um, Levi uh, Yitzchak, um, and yeah, son of Baruch Schneeson, um, and then passed away on the 20th of the month of the Nacham Av, and the year, um, I'm not sure that I can make out what it is, but we know it's 1944 um, uh, when he passed away. Uh, as I mentioned, um, his uh, wife, after the war, um, was able to go west. She first ended up in Paris, where they never traveled from America. That's her son. Uh, to um, greet her uh, and to travel back with her to the United States. And she lived there until 1964. Uh, 1964, uh, she passed away. But of course, the Rebbe was unbelievably uh, respectful of her. Um, but the Rebbe took a, a very strong uh, interest in the writings of his father, which was, he was thrilled uh, to, to get those manuscripts and have them published. But he also, every Shabbos, uh, from the time those, he got those manuscripts, um, he shared some of the teachings that were in there. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, we we're familiar with, with, with the Lebe's teachings, um, but uh, it, it, those were very, very strongly imprinted uh, by uh, the teachings uh, of, of, of his father uh, in terms of combining Kabbalah uh, and all aspects of Torah uh, together. Uh, and, and to make it uh, one unit. So I'm going to share with you briefly um, a teaching of Reblevik, of Reblevik which is uh, in uh, the book of Breshit, uh, chapter, um, I think it's 26, um, where he, do I have it written down here? Yes, 24, sorry. Chapter 24 of Breshit, Likute Levi Yitzchak. Um, and he comments on a few words in a verse. So let me just pull up the verse here for you. Um, and and uh, let, let's look at that and its background. So this is when Eliezer goes to um, east and northeast. He goes to Mesopotamia and he is there to choose a wife and he locates Rivka at the well. Of course, uh, she... Um, meets all criteria, mainly the, the miracle occurs that she offers the camel's water before, uh, she offers it to Eliezer, Eliezer knows she is the right one, he goes home with her, and negotiations start. Um, and, um, yeah, her family agree to the shidduch, and they're happy even for her to go to um, her husband-to-be to leave the family behind and to travel with Eliezer West, but they say not yet. Let her remain with us for literally yamim means days, but it's translated as a year. Asor means 10, which uh, they put in brackets is 10 months. Then she can go. And if we look in Rashi's commentary, why do they want her to stay? They say, we've got we to get her ready. So um, the year, yamim, 
Uh, it came in a year, and Rashi quotes Leviticus, where, where we're talking about a year, which is referred to as the word Yamim. And why is that? Because a maiden must be granted 12 months to outfit herself with ornaments. Uh, if not a full 12 months, then at least 10, um, 10 months. Um, and obviously, this is how Rashi knows that Yamim doesn't mean a couple of days, because you don't normally negotiate and say, well, let's stay for a few days or at least 10 months. So it's obviously... 10 months is shorter than, 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 than the year. So if it says Yamim o Asor, that must be a, lo a longer period than, than uh, the 10 months. Uh, and so um, Rashi says, um, you know, either you give us a full year or if not a full year, at least 10 months, which she's got to get ready. She's got to adorn herself um, so that she can face marriage. Says Rebledi, because the, the choice of word is, 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 is strange. I mean, why say Yamim? Uh, instead of simply saying Shana, which is far clearer. Uh, why say Asor instead of uh, just simply saying Yamim or Eser Chadashim? That, that would be clear and normal and wouldn't then require Rashi to explain uh, uh, what we have over here. So let's understand this Yamim or Asor. And Rebbe Yitzchak uh, says to us the following. Um, we're talking about not just the marriage of Yitzchak and Rivka. We're talking here also about a marriage that is a far more global uh, significance, the marriage of the Jewish people and Hashem. One that is celebrated year on, year after year, over the month of Tishrei, with the actual marriage ceremony happening on Sukkot. Um, and Sukkot, Zmansim Chateinu, that's the wedding, it's the time of the climax, the holidays. Uh, it's when we celebrate and rejoice and we celebrate that relationship with Hashem. Um, but before a, a bride can get married, she has to get ready. And how do we prepare for Sukkot? How do we prepare for that marriage with Hashem? What are adornments? So on Sukkot, we're going to eventually be holding those beautiful uh, assortment of four species, Lulav Etrog, Adasim Aravot, that's going to be uh, come Sukkot, uh, but we got to prepare for that. And that's where we have Yamim O Asor. So let's look at those few words uh, in the verse. We said Yamim, days, which we say is a year, O Asor, which is 10. Um, says Rebladik to us, Yamim, uh, is actually the two-day festival of Rosh Hashanah. It's the only festival that is two days, is Rosh Hashanah. Uh, Yamim, days, that's Rosh Hashanah. Uh, that's part of the preparation for the marriage. Uh, and what else is there? There is Asor, that's a, a reference to Yom Kippur, which is on the 10th day of the month, but in the Torah it's referred to as Asor L'Chodesh, uh, Ashri'i, the 10th day of the seventh month. So those are the to um, the two periods of celebration uh, between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, uh, we have seven days, um, and those are alluded to by O, which means O, that's Aleph and Vav, one plus six. Uh, so that is the reference to, of course, there's 10 days, uh, of penitence. We know that Rosh Hashanah is the two, last two days, Yom Kippur is the tenth day. In between that, we have seven days. One of those is the fast of Gedalia uh, and six others. So it kind of subdivides in, in, into two. One which is spent in, 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 in fasting and slichot and so forth, and six which are all less in, intense, though still very serious. Um, and that entire period, that, that takes us up to um, the preparation uh, for the marriage. Um, so now, um, you know, Yamim actually days, but uh, Rosh Hashanah being the head of the year actually has the entire year condensed in it. Uh, so that's why the other meaning of that word Yamim is actually um, a full year as, as Rashi explains to us. And then, what happens then? Well, then it's time for Sukkot. The bride is fully adorned, and there we have the four species, the etrog, or the citron fruit, the palm branch, or the lulav. We have aravot, which are the willows, and we have the hadasim, uh, which are the um, uh, myrtle branches, which is the, the most beautiful of the four. What the Torah refers to, the etrog, 
as pre eight Hadar, or literally the, 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 the fruit of a, a beautiful tree, but Hadar, uh, that is a beauty. And uh, that is kind of the, 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 the most outstanding, most expensive, and the most beautiful of, of the, those species, species um, specifically referred to by the Torah as the fruit of a beautiful tree with the word Hadar. Now look at this uh, and, and that. If you look at the numerical value of pre eight Hadar, and you add those letters, 80, 210, 70 and 90, 5, 4, and 3, uh, 5, 4, and 200. I hope somebody was adding it all up. That adds up to 659. Um, and these are the words um, that Rivka's family used, the mother and brother. They said, let it remain with us. For yamim o'asor, achar teileich. And then she can go. And those words, then she can go, actually have a numerical value equal to uh, the words pre eight Hadar, which is the, the etrog. Uh, so that's a teaching of, of Rebladik, just something you know, to, to, to give you a, a, an inkling, uh, a bit of a, a taste uh, into his Torah and teachings. Uh, there's a lot, some of it is very deep. This is something a little bit more um, accessible. Um, I'm going to end uh, tonight, Shi'or, with a clip um, of the Rebbe singing what was his father's favorite song? It actually uh, was known as Reb Levik's Nigun. Um, and uh, it is a, a very lively song that is sung on, on Simchas Torah. Um, and in the Rebbe's presence, you know, over the years of every Simchas Torah, uh, that was one of the kind of highlights of, of the celebrations. Um, can I find it? Can I find it? Or has it disappeared? Uh, it definitely is somewhere. So give me a sec. And we'll have it right back for you. I'm sorry about this technical glitch, but here it is. Ladies <laughs> 